أخرج البخاري ومسلم في صحيحيهما من رواية أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال مثل المتصدق والبخيل كمثل رجلين عليهما جنتان من حديد قد اضطرت أيديهما إلى ثديهما وتراقيهما فجعل المتصدق كلما تصدق بصدقة انبسطت عنه وجعل البخيل كلما هم بصدقة قلصت وأخذت كل حلقة بمكانها Reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه the Prophet ﷺ said, The similitude of a miserly man and a generous man who gives in charity is like that of two men who have on two iron clocks that are so tight that their hands forcibly reached their breast and collarbones. Whenever the generous man spends in charity, it expands the iron clock. And whenever the miser intends to spend, it contracts and every ring sinks in his flesh. The Prophet وسلم, in this similitude highlights one of the effects, the positive effects of being generous and spending for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And how facilitated it is for a generous to spend. And the result of that, where he feels comfort and ease and joy to spend. See, charity is one of the great acts of worship which a person harvests the fruits of which in this life before he enjoys the reward of it in the hereafter. And it, as in the hadith, facilitates, makes easy for the person who does it to rid his stinginess. And if there is nothing other than this that results from spending charity for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, it would have been sufficient. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal says, And he who rids the stinginess of his soul, these are indeed the successful ones. However, there are many benefits which one will fail to enumerate both in this life and in the hereafter. Things that one enjoys, gains as a result of spending in this life, is that he becomes entitled, deserving for the supplication of the angels. We're not talking about just any creation. It's, we're talking about the angels about whom Allah Azza wa Jal said, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم 
They don't disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. When He commands them, and they do just as they are commanded, they were created with the nature of being only obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. These are the ones who will supplicate for the one who spends sadaqah. Imam Muslim reported on the authority of Abu Huraira anhu that the Prophet وسلم, said, every morning two angels descend. And one says, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa. Oh Allah, compensate the one who spends. Wouldn't you like that an angel supplicates Allah Azza wa for you? And the other one says, Allahumma a'ti mumsikan talafa. Oh Allah, cause destruction to the one who holds back. So this is one benefit we gain. A lot of people say, well, 1 minus 1 equals 0, 10 minus 2 equals 8, not in Islam. Not when it comes to charity. The Prophet ﷺ said, as narrated by Abu Huraira, reported by Muslim, ما نقصت صدقة مِمَّان Charity will not decrease wealth. See, I told you, not when it, count to, when it comes to dealing with Allah Azza wa Jal. Ali al-Qari rahmatullahi alayhi commented on this saying, this is in two ways. Number one is that Allah Azza wa Jal gives him what he spent in wealth, in terms of actual wealth, tangible wealth. So if you spend 10, Allah Azza wa Jal will give you 10 or 100 back. And there are so many stories that one can say about this in real life, that there would be no time to do that. And the second thing he said is that Allah Azza wa Jal places barakah, blessings. He blesses whatever is left for him after he spent. So if one is used to spending a thousand dollars, for example, for his necessities, and he spends 200 for the sake of Allah, these 800 will become sufficient for him, for his expenses, and even more. So there are two ways Allah Azza wa Jal compensates you. By actually returning, or by causing what's left after spending charity to become either equal or even more than what you actually need. We all suffer, or our loved ones suffer from different ailments and sicknesses. And, and a lot of people come and say, Shaykh, what do we do? Well, the Prophet wasallam tells us that charity is a cure from physical illnesses. Abu Umamah, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, and this is reported by Abu Shaykh and classified as sound, Hassan, by Shaykh al-Albani. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Dawu mardaqum bas-sadaqah. Treat your ill ones by the virtue of spending sadaqah, by the virtue of spending charity. Ibn al-Mubarak was approached by a man who had a wound for seven years. He said to him, I've had this wound for seven years. I've tried different treatments. I've seen different, different doctors, but to no avail, nothing worked out. He said, go and dig a well. And I expect that after you do that and people start benefiting from the water, that Allah Azza wa Jal will cure you. And the man did. And Allah did. A lot of us, in the midst of this 
congested life, busy with work, busy with family, pressures here, pressure there, we feel that our hearts become hard. Don't we complain about that? Don't you stand up in Salah and the Imam is crying and you feel like you are part of the wall. You're not even affected by what's being recited. You hear admonitions, you hear reminders and it's like someone else is being addressed, not you and not me. We all go through these phases, don't we? A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and this is reported by Ahmed classified as sound by Al-Albani and narrated by Abu Huraira. And he complained to the Prophet ﷺ about his heart being so hard, which is what we were just talking about. He said, If you would like that your heart becomes soft, go feed a, a needy person. Go feed a needy person. It'll soften your heart. What's the outcome in the hereafter for spending charity? Again, too many. But one of which is that it extingu extinguishes sins. And I'll explain. The Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported by an Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by Al-Albani and narrated by Mu'ad ibn Jabal. The Prophet ﷺ said, Charity extinguishes sins as water extinguishes fire. Extinguishes here because the result of sin is that you will be touched by fire, punished by fire. So this charity extinguishes the effect of the sin which it expiates. And had you not spent and it, that it did not expiate, then you would be touched by the effect of fire or by fire. Another thing is that on that terrifying day, the day of resurrection, when people go through different sufferings, the one who spent in this life will be enjoying the shade of his charity. Uqba ibn Amr, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said every person will be under the shade of his charity until accountability is conducted for all people. This is reported by Ahmed and classified as authentic by al Albani. You want a protection from the fire of hell? Spend charity. Adi ibn Hatim, and this is reported by Muslim, said that the Prophet ﷺ said, Protect yourselves from the fire of hell, even if you spend as little as half a day. In another narration said, take a shield, place a shield between you and fire by spending even if it is half a day. You want your rewards to be multiplied? Charity. Abu Huraira narrated, and this is reported by Muslim, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Never does a slave of Allah spend as little as a date from a lawfully earned wealth, and Allah Azza wa Jal only accepts from that which is lawfully earned. Allah will accept it with His right hand and fosters it, increases its reward. Just like one of you would foster a baby horse or a baby camel until it, the date, it becomes the size of a huge mountain.
And in another narration, he said, or even greater in size. Aren't these enough rewards? Aren't these enough benefits to encourage us, to motivate us, to spend for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal? We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help us rid the stinginess of ourselves and help us be amongst the generous who spend for the sake of Allah. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allahu wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Glad tidings to all of us. Ramadan is going to be either tomorrow or the day after. Insha'Allah. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to prolong our lives to fast Ramadan and help us fast it, pray tahajjud, recite Quran, spend for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and do various acts of worship and virtue. Allahumma amin. Allah Azza wa Jal favors times and favors places as He wishes according to His wisdom and knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the best times of the year is the month of Ramadan. And now that we're talking about charity, Ramadan is the best time to spend charity because everything is multiplied. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, and this is reported by Muslim, said that the Prophet ﷺ was the most generous of all people, meaning all the time. However, when seasons come, things differ. And he said, وَكَانَ أَجْوَدَ مَا يَكُونُ فِي رَمَضَانِ But he would become even more generous the most generous of the, of the year was during Ramadan. When Jibreel used to descend and review the Quran with him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would be faster in spending than a fast, strong, blowing wind. See how keen he was وسلم, to do virtue, to teach his ummah, to the extent that one day he وسلم, was praying Asr. As soon as he said Salam, he turned around and started hastening out of the masjid, passing the rose, and got into his room. So people became worried, concerned. This is not a normal behavior. When he came out, they asked him. He said, I remember that I had an amount which I did not spend for the sake of Allah and I hated to delay it. SubhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ guided us to the best of charity. The best of charity is that which you spend when you need it. Because that's the real test. If I have 10 and I only need 8 and I give up 1, there is no test. But when I have 10 and I need 11 and I spend 5, that's a real test. That's a real sacrifice. In the book of Imam Muslim, reported by Abu Hurairah, the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the best, and another narration, the greatest charity. He said, it is when you spend while you are in the state of, count, good health, greedy, poor, and hope to become wealthy. You're poor and you spend and you wish to have wealth and you still are encouraged to spend for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when you do, that is the best thing you can do and the greatest in reward 
as per this narration. Another form of charity that is best is that which will continue, the effect of which will continue even after your death. The Prophet ﷺ, this is reported by Muslim, narrated by Abu Hurairah, said when the son of Adam dies, dies, when the son of Adam dies, his deeds cease, stop, except for three things. Number one, a charity, the effect of which is continuous. Knowledge, which is beneficial to people. And a righteous son who supplicates for him. The first one is Sadaqa Jariya, continuous in reward. There are too many forms of spending a Sadaqa Jariya. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, this is reported by Abu Hurairah, narrated by Abu Hurairah, and reported by Ibn Majah, classified as sound by Al Albani. The Prophet ﷺ said, Amongst the deeds, the reward of which will benefit the person after he dies, and he listed many things. Amongst them was knowledge which he taught or which he helped spread. In the past, in the early generation, the second form was in authoring books and the, and the like. In our era, in our time, this can be in sponsoring a book to be published, in publishing a book, in translating books, in spreading beneficial material on the internet, on designing or creating a new beneficial website, and so on and so forth. All of these go under the umbrella or the category of spreading knowledge. Another thing is providing drinking water. Abdul Rahman ibn Samura, may Allah be pleased with him, and this is reported by Ibn Majah, classified as sound by uh, Al Albani, Astaghfirullah Sa'd ibn Ubadah, not Abdul Rahman ibn Samura. The Prophet وسلم, said, The best form of charity is to provide drinking water to people and included in this is digging wells now one might say okay I will spend uh, tonight or tomorrow morning or tomorrow night when Ramadan starts and that's enough well the Prophet وسلم, said a magnificent statement about Uthman عنه, in the Battle of Tabuk. It was the toughest battle the Prophet وسلم, fought because it was far, the enemy was tough, the number was no balance, no comparison, and the, situ the financial situation of the Muslim state was very weak. So he stood up وسلم, and encouraged people to spend. And Uthman kept bringing a thousand dinars, a thousand dinars. Every time the Prophet وسلم, encouraged, he would go bring a thousand and place it in front of the Prophet وسلم, and sit down. And then the Prophet وسلم, would continue. He would be encouraged again, motivated again. He would go and bring another thousand. What was the result of this? The Prophet وسلم, as per the narration, he was placing his hands in the dinars, thousands upon thousands, and moving them like this with his hands, and said, ما ضر عثمان ما فعل بعد اليوم. He said, nothing will harm Uthman after today, whatever he does. Follow suit, follow into the footsteps, of our Salaf, of the companions, of the righteous of this Ummah. Don't settle for one time. Talk to yourself, just like you would talk to a, another person and convince yourself that this is for your own benefit. This is for the worldly benefit before 
the year after, spent and again spent and again spent. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us. Allahumma khfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana.